Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante, along with Shelly Kramer, you're watching our coverage, theCUBE's coverage of day four. We're deep into RSAC 2024. We're really excited to have Zias Caravalla here. He's the principal at ZK Research, friend of theCUBE, CUBE collective member, superstar analyst. Good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you guys. <laughs> so this is, this is a great show. I mean, holy cow. I mean, yeah. you, 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 you do the show every year, yeah? I mean, and you know this space really well. I think it's back to where it was pre-COVID. Oh, I, you know, I, and then, I think and it's then surplus, some. yeah. Yeah, and so it's good. I mean, anybody who's anybody in the SecOps world is here. Uh, you're seeing lots of innovation, tons of startups, the big guys are all having gi yeah. giant parties, a lot of deals getting done. We were at the yeah. CrowdStrike party last night. We left, there was like a line literally of 500 people. Yeah, well, they're on fire, yeah. so. You know, you know it's yeah. amazing to me the show when I go down to the expo hall too. Yeah, I've covered this area a long time and how many companies I've still never heard of. Yeah. Oh yeah. You go down there and like, who are these guys and what do they do? And they got these massive booths and stuff. So not only is the, are the levels back, the investment yes. <laughs> amounts are back as well. And that's, that's certainly good for the whole industry. You know, it was interesting too. We, were at the, we started the uh, Toma Bravo event last mm -hmm. night and they have been buying up. They, they, yeah. they, I, I actually, you know, you see the news, but I didn't realize how many portfolios, they, companies they had in the space. Uh, amazing, yeah. and so uh, those guys, Insight, Insight Capital, yeah. Yeah. same thing. Same. You know, they're doing some more early stage stuff, and so you know, we were talking earlier about the data that we shared with you. As much as customers want to consolidate and simplify, they can't. They can't reduce the number of tools. Why do you think that is? Well, because there's always emerging threats, right? And so, if you look at the security industry, Dave, we've gone through waves of consolidation before. Um, you think of just the the advent of the next-gen firewall, right? You had a legacy vendor like Checkpoint refused to build one. Palo and Fortinet came along, they rolled in IPS, DDoS, uh, VPN, things like that. That created the next-gen firewall platform. Those companies then failed to innovate, <laughs> and it gave rise to companies like Zscaler and Netscope, who rolled in CASB and SWIG and ZTNA and things like that. And, and, uh, and you know, then you got to look at what's next. And I think as we move through time and security, we go through these waves where we consolidate certain areas of features that become, I'm not going to say commodity, but fairly standardized. And then the VC community and the startups focus on the emerging threats that those things don't catch, right? And so it's just the, the nature of the business. Now, uh, the good thing, I guess, for this industry, which is the bad thing for buyers, is that the types of threats continue to evolve exponentially, right. and there's just more entry points now, right? 20 years ago, you didn't worry about mobile devices you know, being threats. You, you didn't, phishing wasn't really that big a thing, and so. Well, you didn't I, have sensors everywhere. Yeah, IoT you know. wasn't, uh, wasn't all that prevalent either. And yeah. so as we connect more things to our infrastructure, we bring in more threats, which creates this wave of new companies. And so, I do believe companies want to consolidate, and we will see rationalization, but I also think we'll see companies continue to buy at record rates because of what I just talked about, all the emerging threats. You got to feel for the customers too. I mean, with all the buzzwords, with all the acronyms, and then you get one company here saying, but you know, you've always said, you still need firewalls. We yeah. know this. <laughs> but you got companies on the other side of that saying, ah, oh, firewalls, that's crazy. Don't spend your money on firewalls. We were at the Palo event. We saw BJ Jenkins and Dan Campbell. They are so pumped about their new firewall announcement. I don't yeah. know if you saw that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're like, customers are like, climbing over the wall to get to this stuff. So what's your take on all that? Help us squint through all that noise. Well, I think it depends on the, on the type of location you have. And I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. If you uh, think about the types of things you want to protect, right? So if you've got a big data center, uh, manufacturing warehouse, you know, thousands of people, lots of data coming in, that's going to look like a very traditional office. You're going to have big pipes coming in there. You're going to have a big firewall coming in there to protect it. You're not likely going to do any kind of SD-WAN or SASE. You're going to have all that stuff locally resonant. You'll need those big firewalls. Then if you go down to the next tier office, maybe your corporate headquarters, uh, you'll probably have a mix where you might have your on-prem firewall and you'll get a lot of other security from, from uh, a SASE service, or SSE service right to the cloud. Then when you get more distributed from there, in which you have branch offices, small branch offices, people like me and you work from home, right? We still need a certain level of security. That's where everything's delivered from the cloud and you're not going to be dropping a Palo Alto next-gen firewall yeah. in your home, right? <laughs> and so you, you need all of those things and that's where the complexity for the user comes into play because I can't secure my big corporate headquarters 
you know, with a cloud-based firewall, but I can't secure my home workers with a prem-based firewall, so I need to make sure all these things work together, and historically, they haven't. But that's, you know, when you, when you look at the world, it's becoming more dynamic and more distributed. We've got autonomous vehicles that are part of your corporate network. We've got, as you were talking about, sensors and yep. on pipelines that are part of your network. And so we do need to deliver security differently, but we still have to deliver it the old way as well to protect those bigger offices, of which there are fewer of, but they still do exist. Well, and on the consolidation front, you know, one of the topics that we've talked about in the last couple of days with vendors is that, you know, in some instances, you, many of the vendors would like to have everybody on their platform. Okay, we get that, right? We see that in the collaboration space, yep. we see that everywhere. But um, in many instances, there's also a talent issue yeah. Because you know you have people who are specifically trained on using this, and a group trained on using this, and so to kind of rip and replace that, you might not have the talent available who knows how to use those. So it is it, they, those things do go together, I think, and it's part of the challenge. I do think incumbency has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, whenever I've asked customers why do you choose this platform versus this platform, this vendor, a lot of it has to do with what well, we we're building off the Palo Alto firewall or the you know Cisco. Duo right. SD Access products, and they just evolve that way. Right now, I understand that as well. It's very hard to prove a concept, a platform. It's also very disruptive if I'm going to rip out all my existing infrastructure and yeah. put it in another vendor, right? And so it, it's much easier in a lot of ways to be able to uh, to build on what you have, yeah. add on the capabilities, and then. Um, you know, around the perimeter, bring in best of breed vendors. Yeah. yeah. But it's added to the complexity, David, to your point. Uh, you know, companies are spending record, re uh, record budget on security. We're having more breaches than we've ever had before. And the world's gotten a lot more complicated. And I, I think the timing of AI in this industry is right because I don't see a path to simplification without it. That's, yeah. that's the reality. I was listening to at, you know, the business network on CNBC this morning, getting dressed and stuff. And they were basically saying, well, you know, cyber's a little off, and of course the, the stocks have been off a little bit because there were some disappointments. But you sure wouldn't know it here. I mean, cyber spending <laughs> is rocking. I mean, it's probably growing at triple the average IT spend. And then you have, you still got M&A going on. You saw, well, I mean, we had no before on, which that was last year M&A, but that was a big nut, you know, 4.5, yeah. 4.6 billion. No name got taken out, right? Was it yep. no name by yep. Akamai? Yep. Yep. Uh, pretty, sh pretty short money, actually. I think 400 million on, yep. they had 200 in, it was 450, I think, they had 200 in, 20 million in revenue. And then the whole lace work thing, that, that fail, I mean, they raised over a billion dollars. Wiz was supposed to take, buy them. That deal supposedly fell apart. What yeah, you I, heard, that? I heard like 11th hour that fell apart. Yeah, yeah I don't know why, maybe it was, uh, it was a debate about what to do with all the cash yeah. that was <laughs> sloshing around, you know. They probably wanted to give it back to shareholders and Wiz probably wanted to keep it. But, and then Wiz does a giant raise, right? Here you are thinking that company's going to go public and now they do a raise, it's like, it reminded me, I said, Shelly, this reminds me of the Cloudera back in the day yeah. when they raised all that money from Intel Capital and, and, or Intel and others. So, what do you make of the M&A climate, clearly hot, and then, but at the same time, you still got, maybe you don't have as much VC action, but you still got, you know, pretty good VC market. Oh, I think the VC action will come back around. I think this this industry is very cyclic. I, yeah. I think uh, what we're seeing now is a is a reality. Just that when you look at the consolidation going on in the SSE SD WAN space, Red Herd Gartner is going to actually ditch their SD WAN MQ and just have a SASE one, mm -hmm. which shows that th those things are maturing yeah. down to a you know single vendor. Um, but what that means is. If you're on the outside looking in, if, you're, if you haven't been acquired yet or you haven't done your own acquiring to roll up to that broader platform, the opportunities for you <laughs> are becoming limited because the bigger vendors are all in it now, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, you see this all the time. If you remember the SD-WAN space, right? Riverbed took off like a rocket. They were the most expensive, no one bought them. And then Cisco bought their way in, VMware bought their way in, um, you know, HP Aruba bought their way in. And then eventually, the company that had the highest valuation eventually had the lowest valuation because there's no more acquirers. And I think you'll start to see that here, right? We've got, you look at SSE, in particular, you got Cisco, Palo, Fortinet, Zscaler, right? You look at a company like Netscope that's poured money in, yeah. right, to build in their infrastructure out. They may be the riverbed of this industry right now where their valuation is so high, they're unacquirable, 
So if somebody does want in, let's say Dell wants to get in the space or whatever, they go by Lookout or something instead, right? Yeah. And, um, and so it, it, security is a tricky thing because we see this cycle repeat over and over, but I do think we're getting to the point now where there's enough maturity in some of these markets that we're going to start seeing more VC action be able to come in and roll some of these things up and you know, then spin them out as a bigger company down the road. Yeah, and I think with this, you know, the the rise of AI, and it, you know, of course, that's driving so much. I mean, it's driving the investment, it's driving the fear, yes. <laughs> right? Um, and you know, being able to combat that because as quickly as the security space is evolving, you know, threat actors are evolving quickly. Yeah, well, they're and, using and AI. They're using AI, and they're yeah. very good at it. Yeah. You know, and they're very incentivized to do that. And you know, you and I were talking earlier um, when you when you made the a comment just now about you know if somebody's not participating, they're not really out there. Well, I think the same is true when you have people internally, when you have engineers who are sort of poo-pooing AI and I don't want to get into that and you know I see all these risks or whatever. The reality of it is, and I'll give you credit for saying this, yeah. it's not you know it's not AI that's going to take your job. It's an engineer who knows how to use AI that's yeah. going to take your job, and that's really yeah. kind of so a reality. So I'm talking to you, the AI skeptic, right? <laughs> if you're not on board with AI. <laughs> You're going to be out of a job soon because yeah. there's another engineer coming up behind you that is on board with it, yeah. and they're going to find a way to do their job better. 100%. And the, the spend, increased spend in security is actually counter to where businesses are with their priorities. Uh, every C-level executive I talk to is looking ways to cut costs, yep. right? And um, there's a lot of macro issues. The election's coming up, right? We have wars, things like that, and it's causing companies to hunker down and try and figure out what what the world's going to look like next year. Yeah. Yeah. And so they'll stop their spend, but security continues to rise. But I think this is an area where AI is being looked at as a way yeah. to do things more efficiently, not necessarily take jobs, yeah. but to allow a five-person security team to do the work of, you know, or, or be able to actually do things they couldn't do before so they can actually bring that reach curve down. Right? There's and two dimensions, we've been talking about it all week. Uh, it's got, maybe it's getting old, but I'll, I'll repeat it, uh, get your thoughts. There's that aspect of it, injecting AI everywhere, what Palo Alto's been doing, yeah. every company's doing, it's CrowdStrike. Near Zook, remember two years ago at Ignite, said within five years, the entire, every, every job will have AI infused yeah. into it, and two years later, it's been happening. Uh, so there's that aspect of it, specifically AI in security, but the, the new thing this year is securing the AI. That yes. wasn't a theme last year. Yeah, it's AI for security, RSA. but then also security for AI. Right, yes. and, and so, yeah. meaning that I, I've tried to use the following phrase. It's like Amazon turned the data center into an API, ChatGPT turns technology into natural language interface. That requires different thinking in terms of how you secure it, how people are hacking it. Um, and so novel technologies are going to emerge to protect that. And there's some here, some people talking about it, but not a lot of stuff shipping. That night at, at our party, um, we heard a lot yeah. of folks talking about this capability startups. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and it's interesting too because it's brought around some older technologies. You think of uh, secure internet browsers, Google at, at <laughs> Google Next announced that and they yeah. cut a deal with Menlo uh, and Palo as well. And I was talking to some CISOs about how they're, why now, right? And uh, the big use case had been VDI, but now it's allowing people to use ChatGPT and some of these Gen AI applications only through the secure enterprise browser, yeah. right? Because you can lock it down, you can monitor what they're doing, and so it's given rise to that industry, which a lot of people had kind of given up on, right? And so, um, is it Island? Isn't uh, Island's yeah, another the one? Yeah. They, they, the, the, Island they, Menlo Security. Yeah. They they got 175 million from yeah. from uh, Insight. Yeah, I mean it's the PE firms. I mean it's just amazing. Yeah. We had we had uh, uh, Mark on from SailPoint, and um, you know they they were they got taken out before then they went public yeah. and now they're yeah. private again you know proof point is we saw submit last night at the at the the what was he Tomer, uh, to, no uh, was it Tomer it Bravo? all runs together yeah, Tomer Bravo. <laughs> but I, I don't think this industry has gotten an AI kick yet and because um, AI for security doesn't really increase it increases the usability of security, but doesn't really increase the applicability of it to more places, where security for AI does. As companies start to build out their AI clusters, as yeah. they start to figure out what to do with their data, yeah. as they start to put more data in more places, you need to think of security differently. And I think that does, that, that does push you towards platform consolidation, though. I think um, trying to apply policies to 
a bunch of different places with a bunch of different vendors yeah. is an imperfect science yeah. at best. And um, I can't I, wait till we see that survey next year yeah. and yeah. see if this is changing. But I mean, yeah, but both are true, Dave. You can add more and consolidate at the same time. Yeah, yes, you can. But the, yeah. The, 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 it's, what surprised me was the degree to which the percentage of customers that were saying they were consolidating uh, was so low. Yeah. You know, consolidating as a means of reducing the number of vendors was actually only 6%. Yeah. And so, that says to me, uh, to your point, um, it can be both, but that says to me there's a really big opportunity for Palo Alto, yeah. CrowdStrike, yeah. Zscaler. Yeah, they're yeah. all consolidated. Every, every one of those firms we talked to said, we're not seeing that now. Yeah. Well, that's Cisco's whole pitch with Splunk, too, right? Is yeah. bring more data in and... G2 yeah. said the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, no, no, this is a big opportunity for us. And it, I think it is a big opportunity, but to that practitioner's point, she said, innovation's happening faster than the consolidation can. Yeah. And so until that slows down, it's probably going to continue. Yeah, I don't see it slowing down though. <laughs> but you have, you have to either. But, right. you, but you have to look again at, the, it's waves of consolidation in certain areas. No one's ever going to be able to take everything and put it on one vendor, right. right? So you will have a separate platform for NG Firewall, for SASE. I think the next area of consolidation is going to be SOC tools. Yeah. I think right now, there's so many SOC tools, and we joke about swivel, swivel, swivel chair management, but <laughs> something's got to connect the dots between my SIM, my SOAR, my XDR, EDR, NDR, right? And AI, AI was the missing piece there, and now we can connect those dots. And so I think that'll be another area of consolidation. So if you're a standalone you know, XDR vendor or SIM, eh, your days may be numbered, <laughs> or you got to go start consolidating to bring some of these things in, and then whatever is next, we'll look to consolidate that in a few years, right? I think that some of this, though, is, you know, when we step back from it, we are early days in all of this. And, so and late days, well, I mean, it's but, an ongoing. But I mean, with the rise of Gen AI, just over the course of the last year, and how that's changed the business landscape, and it will continue to change the business landscape, but where many companies are right now is, we're just trying to get arms around it. We're trying to figure out what our priorities are. We're trying to learn more about, you know, what does this mean for compliance? What does this mean for this sort of thing? So I feel like it's too early, and maybe this is what we saw in our survey results, but I think it's too early for people to just make that consolidation move right now. And it also goes to you know, some of the conversations that we've had about, have been around, you know, is good enough okay? And I think right now, in some instances, good enough is okay because we can't change everything at once. You know what I'm saying? I think well, we have no think, idea huh. what the yeah. security implications huh. of generative AI are, AI are right now. 100%. So. So, you and I, we first started talking about this a couple years ago. I think it was at Ignite. Can you be both best of breed and have a full portfolio? And you said you don't have to be. Yeah. Okay. But then you get, everybody wants the shiny new toy. You got a company like CrowdStrike that actually <coughs> is pretty, doing a pretty good job of yeah. the, doing, doing both. But yeah. they're doing both selectively. They're partnering with Zscaler. They're partnering with Okta. They're not trying to be everything to everybody. And then you got Microsoft who's good enough. And then you got George Kurtz saying good enough's not good enough. Right. It's, it's got to be so confusing for customers. And then you've got procurement and the CFO saying, okay, uh, that's good enough, you know, yeah. check, but then they get hit. So it's, it's just this never ending cycle of yeah. complexity. Yeah, and it depends it on how closely tied it is to your overall platform. I use, you know, Apple is the example. When the new iPhone comes out, do you actually go compare the camera on it to the Galaxy one? Do you go compare the no. screen, right? And, but the reason you use all Apple is because my phone works with my watch, works with my laptop, works with my tablet. It's in iCloud, right? I can yeah. and, store but it. But we're familiar. If they were, if yeah, they were right. to go jump into, I don't know, the TV market and it didn't integrate with that stuff, then you might start comparing yeah. pixels for quality or whatever, yeah. you know, or price or things like that. But they've done a nice job of tying those things together. I think what the security industry hasn't done a great job yeah. is while they've consolidated functionality, they haven't actually made their products created that magical experience that actually makes their products more usable, right? So we, there, there's an awful lot of people integration work that's, that needs to be done to get these platforms to work. And that's, yes. that tells me the vendors don't really understand what platform means, right? It's yeah. not just yeah. selling a bunch of products, it's actually having this stuff create those you know, Apple-like experiences. Right? Yeah, I agree. All right, Zias, hey, uh, as always, awesome to have you on. Um, stick around, We're, Zias and I are going to do a panel yeah. a little later. Uh, appreciate you, man. Always right. happy to be on theCUBE. All right, hey, keep it right there. We got it going wall to wall again, day four at RSAC 2024. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>